You know, there are a few challenges, not only for low-cost airlines, but the entire uh, airline industry in Europe. First of all, the macroeconomic environment is not great uh, in, in Europe. Uh, fuel prices are high on a constant basis, uh, unlike in 2007 when they spiked and, and went down. It looks like that you know, we are seeing a, a different input cost phenomenon uh, going forward. Now, within that context, I think the, um, the challenge to the industry is how to keep costs down. Because certainly this industry has become a commodity. You know, people want to pay as less as they can, and that's the challenge to the, uh, to the entire industry, especially to local airlines, to keep costs down. Um, I think this is something what we are very focused on as, as we said, and uh, by doing it, you know, that still gives us the ability to grow the business. Last year we were growing revenues by 25%, and we are achieving again in 2012 a, a pretty significant growth. But this is all coming on focusing on costs. You know, I think the genuine opportunity is, 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 is the nature of, of, of the business, that this is, this is a commodity. And people want to fly, people want to travel, they don't want to pay too much money uh, for that. So I think the expandability of, of the business model is still representing significant opportunities. You know, there are geographies, the model is not existent. Um, you know, there are geographies where the penetration of the airline industry is still very, uh, uh, very low, like Central Eastern Europe, where Vizel is, uh, is, is busy and, and very focused. You know, only like 10% of the people um, travel uh, by planes, but if you look at the United Kingdom, it's more like 50-60% uh, nowadays, so, you know, just get up to the standards still represents a lot of opportunities. So I think you know, genuinely, uh, the low-cost business model is very appealing to the, um, um, to the crowd of people, um, given their desire of, of, of travel to see the, uh, the world, uh, you know, for leisure or visiting friends and relatives or, or business or, or whatever. So uh, I think there are still new geographies, new territories to explore the business model. I think, I think there, are, there are some good developments on the regulatory side. You know, inside the European Union, uh, the market is free uh, for airlines to decide what routes uh, they want to they wanna fly. They are not subject to any reg regulatory restrictions except for slots. Uh, but more and more countries outside the European uh, Union are getting lined up in terms of their aviation policies to the European Union. And slowly but surely, they are becoming an open market. Um, I think that movement is representing a, a, a very significant opportunity for launching new routes. For example, if you look at Vizer, we just launched a route from, a route from Budapest to Tel Aviv and, uh, and Kiev, uh, which I consider a kind of a breakthrough because we've been able to achieve it on a, on a bilateral basis. Uh, but that was required that these countries were liberalizing their markets, and I think that movement is happening more and more, and it's uh, covering more and more countries. Um, which will create, I think, significant uh, new route opportunities for the whole industry. You know, well, first of all, Vizair achieves the highest unit ancillary revenue uh, in, in Europe. We are, we, are, we are about 25 euros per uh, per passenger, which is, I think, a pretty significant uh, portion, especially when you relate it to the, uh, to the ticket fares, uh, which we score like around 40 euros. Um, so, answer revenues have become a very significant part of the revenue stream of, of our airline, but I think it has become very significant for the entire industry uh, here, in, here in Europe. Well, first of all, I think the most important uh, issue is that you need to keep the ticket fares down, um, because, you know, this is the rational justification why you are trying to create some more revenue streams. If your basic fares are pretty high, I think you create expectations in the mind of the customer that, uh, you know, that comes with services. So I think it would be fairly unacceptable that you keep charging for various things. But if you apply very low fares, I think it would be acceptable, um, and even I would say it would be expected that, you know, whatever extra service the customer wants to take would be charged for. Um, so. I think the best strategy for ancillary revenues is to apply as low fares as you can.
You know, I think this is down to the airline. Um, I, I guess I'm going to give you a very different answer versus if you interview someone else from another airline. You know, our distribution strategy is uh, is Vizair.com. Everything we sell through goes through Vizair.com, the airline's website. We think by doing that we are in control. We own our customer base, so our customers are not the customers of the travel agents or the uh, integrator or whoever they are. Um, you know, you were asking me about ancillary revenues. If you own your customer, you can stimulate the ancillary revenue streams on the customers. If the customer is sold by an agent, you will not get full access to the full potential of, uh, of ancillary revenues. And, and, and thirdly, but also importantly, using other distribution channels would, more, would cost more to the airline than, you know, just being focused on the, uh, on the core internet uh, distribution. So our choice as far as distribution is concerned, is exclusively visa.com. You know, we, we are genuinely a very technologically driven uh, business. We try to be as productive as we can, and we try to, you know, uh, give preference to technology over, over labor solutions. You know, just to be just to be more efficient and more productive as a, as an organization. That having said that, one of the problems with technology is that uh, new technology tends to be very expensive uh, and immature. Um, and I think on this field, you know, at the same time, we, we want to be innovative, uh, but also we want to be conscious about the cost, cost implications of applying uh, technology. So we tend to be more like the first follower when it comes to technology. So we want to see that maturity to mature to some extent and to see the cost coming down. And once you know, we have that level of com uh, confidence, we would be applying that, that technology. But that technology is always decided on a case-by-case -case basis. So whatever we think makes sense to the business model, uh, to the costs and to the, uh, to the benefits from a customer or revenue perspective, we apply. If it doesn't make sense, we don't apply. Um, I, I don't think that that is, that is one thing, uh, what, uh, what I could call, but certainly I think we, we have to recognize the, uh, the consumer trends of, uh, of smartphones. Smartphones are taking over the world, uh, apparently. Uh, it feels to me that uh, in a few years from now, everyone will have a smartphone, and the smartphone will become the prime communication device uh, of people. So, you know, one of the questions and one of the challenges is, you know, how do you hook up with that device as an airline and how do you make sure that, you know, you are, you know, exposing yourself through that device uh, and you are exploiting business opportunities through that device. So, if, you know, that is one thing, what, you know, we are really looking at at the moment is, is, is that issue. I did. I, I did enjoy. I mean, uh, it's it's always interesting to uh, to see you know different views uh, on, on on various topics. I mean, clearly you are seeing that you know. I think it's hard to call you know the local style and industry as a unified industry. You are certainly recognizing that uh, various airlines have, have have various strategies um, that focus on cost or the degree of. Of, of that focus uh, is is different. Uh, you know, one like we said is very focused on cost. Some other airlines are less focused, but they are more focused on getting the business passengers. You know, getting getting into different operating uh, uh, models. So I think it has become a much more diverse uh, segment of the uh, of the industry. That it's already even difficult to call it a low cost uh, industry because it it almost feels like nowadays every airline is different.